The HB Project and the HB Channel are supported by Hi-Fi Clubben. That sound kills good music. How many watts do I need for my speakers? The speakers are brand X, type 3 and are 60 watts. It's a question I frequently get, so time for an answer. Let me start with the 60 watts. Whatever these speakers are, they are not 60 watts. They might be 60 kilos, 60 pounds or 60 euros, but they are not 60 watts. Incandescent light bulbs might be 60 watts, meaning they consume 60 watts of power per hour. This can be specified since light bulbs run on a constant voltage. 230 volts here in Europe, 110 volts in the States and so on. The resistance of the filament is chosen so that at a given voltage a given amperage will flow. The wattage is then simply calculated. But with loudspeakers there only is a constant voltage when I measure a speaker using a test tone. When playing music the voltage varies with the music. And when the voltage changes so does the amperage and thus the wattage. There is another difference with a light bulb since that only has to operate at a fixed 50 or 60 Hz, while loudspeakers must do varying frequencies up to 20 kHz, while the resistance for the AC music signal changes with the frequency. Then why does the manual state that your speakers are 60 watts? The usual specification is power handling. It is like the specs of a car tyre saying 200 kph. That doesn't mean that those tyres at their own will do 200 kph. It merely means that they are suited for cars with a maximum speed of 200 kph. If you use these tyres on a car that goes a lot faster, chances are that the tyres will overheat and will burst. They can easily be used on cars that are limited to say 150 kph. Most loudspeakers use a kind of linear motor that is in essence a voice coil, a spool wound around a carton tube, hung in a magnetic field of a permanent magnet. By sending an AC current through the coil it will be attracted and repulsed so moving the attached cone. The problem is that not all power is converted to movement. There also is a considerable amount of power that is converted to heat, just as with the incandescent light. When the build up of heat gets too high either the voice coil can melt or expand so it no longer runs free in the magnet slot. In both cases the circuit will be broken and the speaker will stop working. The common phrase here is the speaker is blown up, where actually only the voice coil is broken. Unfortunately this also means that the speaker needs to be repaired by a specialist. But if your speaker can handle 60 watts, your amp should not be able to provide more than 60 watts, right? Wrong. As I have told you already, it is heat that causes the problem. And heat is caused by the amount of energy that is stored in the music signal. You need your amplifier to be able to produce peaks instantly when needed. But such peaks are very short, contain little energy and do not cause heat build up. Only when high levels of compression are applied or when the amplifier is driven beyond its capabilities, the total energy in the waveform is very high. This will be audible as distortion. It is caused when the amplifier is not able to reproduce the peaks while the average level is brought up. When an amplifier produces a waveform like this at its maximum power, the shape remains intact. When we further increase the amplification like this, the part above the maximum output level is not reproduced, the signal will be clipped like this. Now, if you compare this with the original signal, you can see that it's wider and thus contains more energy. 
The energy in the normal wave is like this blue part, while the clipped part adds energy as marked here in red. So the output voltage is not higher but is applied for a longer period and thus giving the voice coil less chance to cool down in between the times maximum voltage is applied. Above that causes the resulting distortion for energy output not only for the original frame frequency but also for a large number of harmonics. Therefore it is not advisable to have an amplifier with less power than needed in your situation while having more power than needed within reason causes no problems and can improve the sound. The advantage of having more power is comparable to having a car with more power. Even when the speed limit is 130 kph as it is in my country. For the car will be able to overtake in shorter time since it accelerates faster. If you ever drove a fully loaded underpowered car on the Perry Peripherique, you know exactly what I mean. But how much power do you need then? Well, that depends largely on the speakers but also on the amplifier and the size of the room. It's like asking how much power your car should have. If it's an upright 4x4 model, you might need considerable more power to drive 130 kph than when it's a very low two-seater sports car for the latter has far less drag. Car manufacturers don't publish drag measurements of a car, they publish the drag coefficient. What we would like to see is a specification that tells us how fast the car's, a car goes when the engine produces a certain amount of power. And that's what speaker manufacturers do. They specify how much sound pressure level that we experience as loudness is produced at 1 meter when 2.83 volts is applied to the speaker terminals. Sometimes 1 watt at 1 meter is used but that is what 283 volts produces in an 8 ohm speaker. It is normally written as db uh, slash 2.83 v slash 1 m and the loudness is in db sound pressure level or db SPL. An average value is 89 dBs, very inefficient speakers deliver 82 dBs and very efficient speakers like horn loudspeakers can even do 105 dB by 2.83 volts and 1 meter. In earlier programs I suggested that you should listen at a level of around 80 dB SPL A weighted. So if you would adhere to that, would a 1 watt amplifier be more than sufficient when you have an 8 ohm speaker that does 82 dBs at 283 volts at 1 meter. You would indeed get 82 dB sound pressure level, but there would be no reserve for peaks, the so called headroom. For pop and rock 14 dBs of headroom would be sufficient and for acoustic music and classical music 20 dBs would be a safe bet. But it is more likely that you have speakers that do around 89 dBs at 283 volts and 1 meter. Furthermore, you are not at 1 meter distance and you use two speakers in a stereo setup. You could now calculate approximately the power you need and if you can't yet calculate in dBs you could first watch my video the dBs explained. But I will also publish a link to an Excel sheet below this video. Download this sheet, enter the sensitivity of your speakers and the desired headroom. Now you look up the desired listening level in the green column and you will find the required power per channel in the yellow column. That's easy, so we set. I'm sorry, no. There still is the matter of the ability of the amplifier to deliver current. Again there is a parallel in the automotive world called torque. Wikipedia defines it as follows. Torque, moment or moment of force is the tendency of a force to rotate an object about an axis. In other words it is the instantaneous force that is needed to get a car moving. Diesel engines and turbo loaded 
petrol engines have far higher torque and make a heavy car accelerate faster up to the speed where the drag becomes the major factor and the power becomes the discriminating factor. In a stereo the amplifier applies a voltage to the speaker and then a current starts flowing. If the voltage remains high, for instance because it's a bass note with lots of energy in it, the amplifier must be able to keep producing the current otherwise the amp loses control over the speaker motion. We might be glad there is a specification for loudspeaker efficiency but unfortunately there is no specification for the amp's ability to provide a sustained current. Add to that the varying impedance over the frequency range and you might understand that finding out whether an amplifier is suited for your speaker by studying the specs is impossible. Thanks Hans, that really helped, I hear you say. I know, life sucks and then you die. Unless you have ears, then you just can listen. The overall loudness is due to the power of the amp and the efficiency of the speaker, as the top speed of a car is mainly due to the power of the engine and the drag of the car body. The control of the low notes is mainly due to the capacity of the amplifier to provide current and a number of properties of a given speaker. Like the torque of a car engine is the main factor for the pulling power of a car, like towing, driving uphill and a standing start. Reviewers often tell you whether an amplifier is capable of providing lots of current and if a speaker needs it. A dealer of good standing might also be a good source and talking of that, if you use a dealer as a good source, you don't take his advice to go shopping on the web, do you? There's nothing wrong with shopping on the web but you don't do it by first stealing the knowledge from a dealer. One last remark. There is a strange difference between solid state amps and tube amps. In practice, tube amps only need a fraction of the power a solid state amp would need to drive the same loudspeakers. My Audiophysics Scorpios have an efficiency of 91 dB at 283 volts and 1 meter and are driven by an AudioNote single ended tube amp of 13, 1, 3 watts per channel. This phenomenon has been studied by my ex-colleague Peter van Willerswaard and some others, but I haven't taken the time to study their publications. I guess it will take some time before I will because there is quite some equi equipment stacking up to be reviewed. So subscribe to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You can also post questions but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my questions video to find out why. You'll find more information below this video. If you like this video, please support the channel and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.